Kamala Shamsi grew up in Karachi in Pakistan, writing her first book while she was still in college. Her latest novel, Home Fire, is a reimagining of a classical Greek play set among British Muslims in London. It explores racism, radicalization, love and politics. Shamsi's work has been translated in more than 20 languages and she's won a number of prestigious awards. For this latest prize, the jury initially said they believed her writing builds bridges between societies, but then later decided to withdraw the award because of a complaint about her support for the BDS movement. BDS, or the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign, is a Palestinian-led protest movement seeking to pressure Israel to comply with international law. It was inspired by the South African anti-apartheid movement. But supporters of Israel say it's anti-Semitic and seeks to demonize the Jewish state. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I like an award as much as the next writer. Um, and this is an award that has gone to many distinguished writers who I love. And I also like a nice check attached to, to the award. But when this happened, it so quickly became clear that it wasn't about me. It was about this much larger story of um, how BDS and those who support it are being attacked. Mm -hmm. um, that really, in some weird way, it didn't feel personal. You know, here is a movement that is peaceful, that is advocating for human rights and upholding international law, um, and it is being vilified. Well, supporters of Israel point out that this is singling out one state. Why not have a similar boycott of states like Saudi Arabia, for instance? I don't know how I would enact a cultural boycott of Saudi Arabia to begin with. Um, but, you know, you could say the same about South Africa because it is the call that is coming from within. Um, I'm not aware of a call coming from within Saudi civil society that is asking writers to do a particular thing. And there's also, of course, the matter of the way in which the Israeli state has used culture. Um, and you know, they're, they're, they very much use it as propaganda. You had, um, you've had statements from within the Israeli foreign ministry saying things like, um, there is no difference between culture and propaganda. So to then say, well, why cultural boycott? Well, because culture is, has been weaponized by the state already in a particular way. Um, but I, I think the other important thing with BDS, and this is where it does differ from the South African boycott, is it doesn't target individuals. It doesn't say you will target everyone who's Israeli. It doesn't say you will go and find out people's political views. Um, that it does target institutions that have links to the state. So if a writer wants to come, an Israeli writer wants to come to a festival here and take part, BDS doesn't say they're not allowed to. BDS says if they're taking money from the Israeli government, if they're sponsored by the Israeli government, then the boycott comes into place. There's also been an ongoing battle here in the UK within the Labour Party mm. over the definition of anti-Semitism. Mm. So is criticism of Israel or criticism mm -hmm. of Zionism, mm. anti-Semitic. If you go to the BDS website, on that homepage, it's very clearly stated, we are against all forms of discrimination, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia. We all have to be very clear about the fact that anti-Semitism is absolutely unacceptable, but that that does not mean you cannot criticize the state of Israel. So let's talk a little bit about your book, Home Fire. Mm. In this book, you imagined a British Home Secretary of South Asian background who was quite right wing. Mm. Uh, as it happens, we've had not one, but two. I um, know. How do you feel about all of that playing out? I mean, are you a soothsayer? I end up feeling very protective of my character every time one of the other Home Secretaries in real life does a thing mm. that my guy wouldn't. And people say, oh, he's, he's being like Karamat Lohan in Home Fine. I would say, no, 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 my person wouldn't say that. Mm. Yeah. What, what do you think it says about Britain that mm. Um, people of uh, second-generation immigrant background mm. have been able to reach such positions? I think it says more than one thing. Diversity is not really about a matter of skin colour. It is about what views are you bringing to the table. If you are bringing someone in but they're increasing rhetoric against migrants, that isn't really helping the cause of diversity at all. Um, yes, things have changed in Britain in the last couple of generations. And you are seeing so that we have both Sajid Javed and um, Sajid Khan, um, that you have a variety of people in, in different positions. But I would, I would caution against a kind of, you know, easiness 
of saying, well, if they're brown, it's di they're diverse. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. You've written quite movingly about becoming British yourself and the process of citizenship. Um, something that we've been grappling with in recent years is the mm. debate around citizenship stripping and Shanima yeah. Begum being mm. an example of that. Mm. What are your thoughts on how that's all played out? I think it's a very t scary moment, really, when citizenship is made contingent for some people. I worry about what it says for generations who are born and being raised in Britain but know that there is this you know, because their parents are migrants, because they have a claim to a second passport, that that means in the eyes of the law, um, they are British until they are not. As a person of dual nationality, mm. how do you fare on the Tebbit test when it comes to cricket, as a cricket fan too? Um, you know, I became a British citizen at the age of 30... God, what was it? No, the age of 40, pretty much. Mm. Um, and I have been... Pakistani and a Pakistani cricket watcher all my life. So there's no question on that. <laughs> Kamala Shamsi, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you very much.